All right, so now we're finishing off the tomorrow talks for Arab Health. It had been four crazy days with insights, and I'm very happy that Mazen is joining us from the Dubai Health Authority to talk about value-based care. And that is a topic that is extremely important for the entire industry and across the board because we have to focus on value, we have to focus on outcomes, and that is sometimes easier said than done. So Mazen, I'm pretty sure you will share your insights and smarten us up a little bit, and I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. So thank you for the opportunity to be the closing act for today's uh, session and Arab Health. So um, as, uh, as uh, Mika said, um, uh, our agenda for today is basically we're going to give a quick introduction on uh, uh, what the current state is and what we are trying to aspire for. Value-based care is basically the new healthcare paradigm, the inclusion of, of patient care all the way to um, cover social determinants and behavioral health go outside the borders and the walls of the hospital to reach out to the patient. That's the concept which is now the focus of the whole world to move healthcare into. And then I'm allowing, hopefully, inshallah, in 10 minutes, I'll allow you five minutes of Q&A if you have. Um, I have 17 slides, so bear with me. Excellent. So just a quick introduction of uh, myself. I've been working across in healthcare since 2000. I've been um, a student and uh, an actual, uh, uh, my career has uh, come across CERNA for six years. I learned a lot, worked in the UK, France, uh, UAE, and the Middle East. Uh, uh, on the digitization of healthcare, and then I moved to work for Abu Dhabi Health Authority and uh, PwC to cover the consultancy piece where I did e-health strategy and continue the digitization of healthcare in the hope that one day we go into outcome-driven healthcare. And finally, now I'm in Dubai Health Authority helping the implementation of Dubai Health Strategy with all our partners and private sector facilities in the technology world as well as in the insurance and payers world. So just a quick, I would love you to connect with me on LinkedIn. So do come and get me on LinkedIn. I'm a big fan of Maker's uh, social media. And please, I want fans to actually follow me and follow him as well. Fantastic. So a quick ad there for you. Um, so, you know, leadership, our vision is to always be number one with the help of partners like uh, a big EMR, um, um, digital health um, 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 partners and technology um, innovators. Uh, uh, we are able to try and leapfrog healthcare specifically as the leadership has pointed us that there won't be any more second place or third place. We have to be number one. And that's why, for, the, for example, the Dubai Health Strategy is to try and make Dubai, transform Dubai and the UAE into a world class healthcare destination by innovating and integrating care model and engaging the community. So we have a very uh, uh, adventurous journey to, to go through. Um, um, some of the facts that we, I have just listed here, just to show you the great work that has been happening in the UAE. When I moved to the UAE in 1976, I wasn't even born then, but child mortality and mortality rate for children below uh, five years old has, has improved uh, dramatically and now we have 6.1 deaths for every 1,000 live births and we are trying to, to, to lower the bar even further and improve uh, our rates and KPIs. We have a huge growing population, allow us to look at diversity, over nine, uh, 185 nationalities. Well, uh, we need to look at personalized medicine, innovating in care with partners like um, um, in the technology field as well as in the insurance world to look at how we can care for our patient and stay away or drive away from volume-based care into more value-based. We are also working with our sister authorities and sister uh, agencies in the government of Dubai to try and utilize and diversify the economy. And, by, and again, looking at how we can cater for the patients and our population as we experience uh, long lives as we go through um, um, uh, the development and the maturity of our economy and uh, lifestyle in the United Arab Emirates and Dubai specifically. So let's dive in into the matter. What I'd like to do is first take you through a, some, um, uh, some points about the healthcare reform. Obviously, healthcare is, um, is, actually, healthcare is actually going through a, a, uh, an exchange um, of ideas, a change, a complete revolution in, in the way its, its um, uh, services are being provided. 
due to the complexity of the industry itself. It's such a complex industry. It's lagging behind when we compare it to the aviation industry or the retail and hospitality industry in the utilization of innovation to change policies, to change processes, to change our competencies as well. So there is a lot of work that needs to be done here. The way we actually um, offer services in healthcare and the way we reimburse healthcare is at the heart of the transformation we are trying to do at the moment. One of the big projects we are leading in Dubai Health Authority is the diagnosis related group to try and see how we can price our healthcare services in a way that allows us to shift easily from volume based to value based. And finally, Adapt, adaptive responses and basically looking at the cultural transformation, whether it's on a patient population or from a clinician point of view, how they transform their competencies and skills to cater for more uh, thinking outside the box when it comes to ad administering and reaching out to the patient with uh, a quality, high quality healthcare services. So looking at accessibility, looking at uh, diversity of services and so on and so forth. So um, I just thought I'll throw this in. The value-based care ecosystem will revolutionize the healthcare, bringing two main players into the equation, the ones highlighted in red. So the role of the insurance companies will have to be revolutionized to look at how we can hold providers accountable and vice versa. How can the providers would actually work with the payers to make sure that they administer value to the patient care and how the professional institutions and the academic world would be able to look at research, look at the amount of data that we are collecting from the patient through our electronic medical records or our wearables and devices and try to crunch that through the new technologies like artificial intelligence and data analytics means. Uh, policy makers have to adapt because regulation would not be able to stagnate anymore as, as, as the situation now is, where the regulation always lags behind as we revolutionize healthcare. And the use of inclusion of the patient and the actual inclusion of the patient and redefining of the word patient and shifting away towards consumerism and the e-health consumerism concept would allow us to look at digital and innovation and how we can build an environment, a fertile environment as we shift through the, into the value-based care. Again, it's a long journey. It's not a few years. It's probably going to be many years to go as we go and tackle it project by project. So, um, moving on. This is just a, a quick overview of the patient movement in a healthcare system, whether it's in community, in the community atmosphere, or moving into the tertiary secondary care uh, um, dimensions. So the patient movement is basically essential as we, we try to follow the patient to try and look at how we can, how can we drive outcome driven care? What is the most valuable uh, points of care uh, uh, intersection with the patient journey. How do we actually make sure that the care coordination is built into the hospital or the primary care uh, uh, clinic to actually uh, follow the patient and administer the right or provide the right services. Again, it's a complex process and following the patient is very key for implementing value-based principles. So we are questioning ourselves Looking at the current state um, uh, Dubai health ecosystem, complete fragmentation, different hospital systems, different um, com uh, digital, uh, digital solutions, um, are they talking to each other? How can we bring in those, um, those amount of registries and databases to talk to each other and exchange data and make sure that we can analyze this data to follow the patient journey as they go from primary to secondary to tertiary and backwards? And how can we actually reach the community care down to the you know move it into the home of the patient to see how we can look at the social determinants which is another added flavor when we go into uh, value-based care social determinant and behavioral health protecting the clinicians from obviously burnout because at some point we'll have to worry about that as we go into value-based and data crunching healthcare system right so 
a very simple equation for you who love maths and physics. I mean, this is just a, a, a quoted equation from one of the wonderful um, um, presentations I saw at the Center of Medicaid and Medicare, where value looks equals quality plus service divided by cost. And we are trying to push all, all most of the projects we have in Dubai Health Authority, or even our sister authority, the Department of Health in Abu Dhabi, or the Ministry of Health, is to look at how we can improve quality and services. As the cost is being, exp exp I mean, ex the expenditure has been rising. So how do we actually increase the, the numerator in order to give better value? One of the main projects we are uh, at the moment going to start working on is the establishing the Dubai Health Facilities Performance Framework, which is a, a, a sister project to what Abu Dhabi has in terms of uh, putting all the quality indicators for the facilities in Abu Dhabi to look how they perform. It's called the Jauda Jauda system. Again, looking at how we automate and we actually regulate some of the services uh, to actually improve quality. We've just finished an implementation of our EMR Salama across the Dubai Health Authority. Uh, Abu Dhabi Health Authority has, has done that many years ago and now they're optimizing. And these are some of the projects, the key projects in the country that are allowing to, are trying to improve services and the sharing of data in the hope at the end uh, we, this is the goal, this is the light at the tunnel and many uh, as, uh, as we go through this journey, right? Again, there is risk, but there is obviously chances for profit and chances for lo losing. But the lessons learned is patient being back again at the center. The concept of primary care, medical home, the concepts of patient-centered services. These are the concepts that are revolutionizing healthcare as we go into value-based care. So. As we go through the next slide, I just want to give you some of the goals that we've highlighted as we are also rolling out the diagnosis-related groups in the Emirate of Dubai. The most important thing when you talk about paying for quality is to think about improving the services itself. By automating is one enabler, by actually changing the clinical policies and building competency at the clinicians and having doctors and nurses who are very well acquainted with the technology, well acquainted with the, with the new thinking when it comes to patient care, consumer, uh, consumer handling. Um, it's very important that we see that quality care uh, value-based care means improving services. The next one is also looking at the pricing and the reimbursement model. How do we reimburse? How do we cut down duplicate tests and diagnostic uh, procedures? How can we look at the patient instead of filling the demographics of the patient, of the patient every time they go into a facility, unify that process and actually apply it once and you just update it again and again. Some of the great work that the Wareed project and the Ministry of Health has been, has been uh, accomplishing and achieving is the unification of the medical records across the facilities in the Northern Emirates. Improving accountability and this is very key for the su success of paying for quality or in other words value-based care. Accountability is one of the important values we have at the Dubai Health Strategy. How do you actually hold providers accountable, hold payers accountable. Value-based care means you're going to look at the payers' processes and try to tackle fraud. You're going to look at the providers' processes and tackle uh, stop duplication of patient records, of procedures, of tests. So value-based is the light at the end of the tunnel that guides all the efforts that has happened in the UAE towards a more efficient, more effective, accessible and equitable healthcare system. Um, Next, some of the opportunities we have, the development of methodologies, the use of innovation is absolutely key to the success of a conversion and the transition into value-based care. Looking at processes, the concepts of consumer and reporting, the ability to actually build dashboards to actually look at all this huge data that we are accumulating from all the solutions, all the wearables, and all the information management systems that we implement. The broad acceptance, and I say here, the cultural transformation. Your, your patients are not becoming uh, are not becoming dormant entities or things. They are becoming more smarter. They're much smarter. They are becoming consumers, and they they are always they are always thinking and reading and wondering how can this affect my life. Their healthy lifestyle is becoming the focal of their uh, focal point of their of their um, of their transformation as we speak. So transformation on the patient side, transformation from the physician clinician side, but the missing point here also the transformation from the payer and the pharma side because they need to play a 
a bigger role than just selling drugs or selling insurance plans nowadays. Demanding for quality, because as the patient is requiring better services, the consumer wants better doctors, better healthy life, they require much more attention from all the care coordination teams. We, that's why we're driving value-based care. This also influences us to standardize processes. Look, looking at, for example, data governance laws, HIPAA laws and whatnot. How do we actually try and revolutionize these laws at the moment as we go into medical tourism and health tourism? And how would this interact with value-based care? Uh, technologies and innovation is a key enabler as we move from you know, data analytics into artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, and all the added flavors that we get with blockchain technology and, um, and the other quantum computing and nanotechnologies, another untapped resource. So it's very exciting times. There are challenges, however. Obviously, the identification and the agreement across all the uh, healthcare sector on the quality measures and what does it mean? You should make sure, we should make sure that those quality measures are built within a context. And it means it does not harm the investors nor it harms the hospitals and providers. You don't want to isolate the providers, you don't want to put the insurance companies in the corner. You need to make sure that they're all playing a vital role. And if you are be performing below the bar, then it's a coaching opportunity. It's a mentoring opportunity for you to either be coached or bought over and flipped over to a, succe to a successful uh, healthcare provider. Setting realistic expectation and making sure that we engage a stakeholder. Value-based care, transforming healthcare is all about engaging stakeholders. And we, there's a lot of lessons learned from the US model when, when they are moving into value-based where people actually could manage this process by actually sitting and planning and looking at data governance, looking at innovation and technology and how value-based care would, look, would actually bring in back the patient into the center focal point. The risk of unintended consequences, again, it's the good news is in the UAE we are able to look and benchmark, look at the best practices in the UK when they started going into the accountable care model and how those accountable care principles have been put to allow accountability at the provider's side. So some of the challenges, but uh, they are, I mean, I'd say they will, uh, they will have positive impact as we transition and transform into uh, uh, into uh, uh, value-based care. So I just want to ask the audience from this picture. This is a, a, a postulation of the value-based healthcare ecosystem. What do you think is missing from this picture? Just want to see. Just engage you. Shout it out. The consumer. Consumer, excellent. What else? Say again, sorry. What's missing from this picture? Sorry? Insurance. Insurance, very good. The payers, well done. It's consumer, well done. What do you think? Suppliers, anybody can see that? The pharma, right? It's not there, right? So there is, again, value-based care ecosystem what actually should include more than just this. This is by looking at these are, these are the main areas that will be included in a healthcare system. In a, in a continuum of care, you would want prevention to be included. Urgent care, what about the care of determined ones and those uh, who are actually privileged to actually be part of the healthcare ecosystem if needed. Looking at elderly care, looking at payers, farmers to be stakeholders. So again, we are not just looking at policy, Pro and we are looking at surveillance, we are looking at social media, uh, social uh, behavior, uh, behavioral uh, health and social determinants. We are looking at services and practical uh, policies that we can revolutionize as we go into the healthcare system. But we are also thinking outside the box by looking at those stakeholders that we need to include. Reimbursement models, uh, consumer-centric uh, behavior and consumer-centric practices. So. In, 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 in uh, conclusion, I just want to show you, I'm reading a wonderful book called The Value Management in Healthcare. You can download it online. It, it shows a beautiful value realization framework. I've highlighted this in red because when you think about value-based, you need to look at how you can integrate six major pillars. You're not only looking at the financial uh, measurements in isolation to the clinical measurements. No, you're going to put in consideration process improvement, patient satisfaction, employee satisfaction and specifically where the employer in this region 
bears the brunt of the health insurance. So the employer needs to play a bigger role in the value-based care. The learning and growth on both on, uh, across all the stakeholder engagement uh, model that we are planning. And this will at least define our value management framework, which will probably build the key performance indicators and those measurements that we can use in our value-based care as we go through the, the transition. Um, another beautiful slide that I actually read in the book, value-based care is about engaging stakeholders, about the care coordination, about coordinating across the multiple players from employers and providers to payers and government as well as the suppliers such as technology, medical devices, and pharma. So in conclusion, this is a, a huge transformation in the health system that will include uh, uh, all those stakeholders. Just don't forget, it's a wonderful book that is online. It will give you an understanding of a wonderful framework. I just want to conclude with thanking you for this opportunity. Let's connect. Um, Mabruk, so Mubarak, that means congratulations for attending a wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I love that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it was thought-provoking, exciting, and freaking scary at Indeed. the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you take one thing away from me, which is I don't want to be afraid. Right. I don't want to be scared. Right. How can you help? I think it's, it's, we have to have a group hug, number one. <laughs> a group hug in the sense that all stakeholders need to get to the table and start thinking. Because it's not just the provider's role to do this transition or the, tra the transformation into value-based care. It's not only our role to set the strategy and put the policies as a government entity and work with government authorities like Ministry of Health or Saha or Health Authority Abu Dhabi, the Department of Health to try and drive put down the vision. It's not only the farmer to come in and sit with us and let us know about their best practices and how they dealt with similar issues in, the, in, in countries like US, Canada, UK that have already attempted that. Well, it's not about the insurance, it's not only the insurance companies that have huge amount of data analytics that they are crunching, a lot of data that they are actually analyzing and they are going through their uh, registries and databases to kind of come out with uh, uh, plans and uh, clinical pathways. So it's the collaboration of all those stakeholders that will ensure that the fear would not actually come into your heart as we go through this transformation. Plus, there's a lot of lessons learned from examples where we can go to the to, um, uh, to the value-based care attempts in the U.S. and some of the actual implementation of value-based care in the U.K. and see how we can leverage. So with the help of suppliers, pharma, insurance, where we sit together and design this. And everybody, it's a win-win situation. No losers here, hopefully. Basically, using the lessons learned, don't reinvent the wheel, but leapfrog what we have. Absolutely. Which questions do we have from the audience? The audience is scared. It's scared, huh? Because you didn't bring us yet together and we didn't have the group out. <laughs> Mazen, nevertheless, thank you so much for sharing it. these insights. Thank you are you. absolutely spot on. I think we all together can change the face of healthcare for the future. None of us will be able to do it alone. But there's one good thing about that. Sure. The consumer is rising in power. The consumer is rising and taking a more active part in the healthcare journey. That's correct. This means that you and I can actually make a difference Absolutely. by doing something ourselves. Absolutely. Thinking out of the box. Perfect. Thank you. For thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Cheers. All right. I thank you very much for attending the Tomorrow Talks during Arab Health. This was our closing remark, and I think it was a scary and an exciting one at the same time. So I can't wait for the next Tomorrow Talks. I think we should just do them every week. <laughs> Listening to all these thought leaders in the industry, was so thought-provoking, but it also brought out so many ideas and how we can really do something about changing the future collectively, together, and how we can move really fast because none of us will be able to move fast alone. Thanks again.